In this lesson, I'll talk about the objectives of cryptocurrencies, in particular Bitcoin. Later, you'll meet some of the technologies that cryptocurrencies use to address these objectives. In the first lesson of this series, you learned that these days, buying and selling things with traditional fiat currency doesn't have to involve cash. You simply instruct your bank to pay someone, and any banks involved will record the transaction in their ledgers. For example, if Charlie pays Mike £100 with his debit card, then Charlie's bank will update its ledger accordingly. And if Mike is with a different bank, then Mike's bank will also update its ledger. At any point in time, a bank can quickly calculate how much money someone has from the historical data in the ledger. 90% of the money in the world is ledger data, like this, stored by banks in databases on computer servers. Although modern banks employ extensive security measures, a computer-based ledger is a tempting target for a skilled hacker or a disgruntled employee. We also rely on the banks, the individuals that work for them and the governments that control them to invest our money carefully. Sometimes they don't and the consequences are disastrous. Cryptocurrency was invented to address the limitations of money and the banking system. Bitcoin was the first mainstream cryptocurrency. Its objectives and how it would work were published in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto. This person or group of people remains anonymous to this day. The original objectives of Bitcoin included that people would be able to buy and sell goods and services over the internet quickly and easily from anywhere in the world. Well, we can do that now with fiat currency, but Bitcoin would be free of any central control. Banks and governments would have no say in how it was managed and used. As a result, Bitcoin would be insulated from boom and bust cycles in the economy, which on many an occasion in the past have caused banks and other financial institutions to fail catastrophically. The power of Bitcoin would be in the hands of the people who used it. Cutting out the middlemen and the bureaucracy would allow for much faster transactions at a greatly reduced cost. Bitcoin would also allow people without bank accounts and indeed whole communities without banking systems to do business, opening up new markets for everyone. Bitcoin would also be secure. Using established cryptographic techniques, any transactions would be completely anonymous and virtually fraud-proof. Bitcoin was officially launched in January 2009, and the first ever Bitcoin transaction took place on May the 22nd, 2010, when Laszlo Hanya spent 10,000 Bitcoins on two pizzas from Papa John's. 10,000 Bitcoins were worth about 40 American dollars back then. These days, 10,000 Bitcoins are worth about 389 million dollars. May 22nd is now known as Bitcoin Pizza Day. You'll often see Bitcoin depicted as a real coin, but this picture is completely misleading. There are no physical coins that you can carry around in your pocket. A cryptocurrency is actually a collection of computer programs designed to enforce a set of rules. A set of rules for maintaining an electronic ledger. All of the computers participating in the Bitcoin network, of which there are tens of thousands, run programs that do pretty much the same thing. They maintain the ledger. People think of Bitcoins as being mined. This is not the case. Running programs that add transactions to the Bitcoin ledger is known as mining. And people get paid in Bitcoin for doing it. The original version of Bitcoin Core was written in the programming language C++. Rather badly, some programmers would say. But there are now implementations in other programming languages, such as Python and Java. The programming language is not what matters here. As I said, a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is really just a set of rules enforced by software. Indeed, the C++ programs for Bitcoin Core 
are open source, and their code can be downloaded for free and adapted or completely rewritten, if you know how, as long as you continue to enforce the rules. Bitcoin may be the first, most well-known and most valuable of cryptocurrencies, but these days it's just one of thousands. In fact, there are now many more cryptocurrencies than there are traditional fiat currencies. With a little effort, you could probably create a new one yourself. There are also hundreds of online exchanges such as Coinbase, Binance and Gemini which allow anyone to trade cryptocurrency. Originally, cryptocurrencies were developed to solve world problems. These days, most of them exist only to make money for their developers. You could be forgiven for wondering if cryptocurrency has lost its way. In the next video, I'll delve into some of the technology behind the Bitcoin network. In particular, the blockchain.